There he is. Did you guys see that? That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one, guys. Holy smokes. He smoked it. Welcome back to another episode of Bassett with Captain Lou. Fishing in South Florida urban parks. This is one of my bank fishing editions. You guys do not want to miss this. Nice surprise today. Very nice surprise. Stick around. Look at the size of this iguana, guys. Just hanging out in the tree. Believe it or not, there's bigger ones. There he is. Didn't take much. Didn't take much at all. That was about my fourth cast. You see, these little swim baits do awesome. Let me get out of the sun. These little swim baits do awesome. I mean, not big, but it's a nice little start. See, these clear water bass here in South Florida are so pretty. They have a different color to them. They have like a very, very light green and they're very, very white on the bottom. Beautiful fish, very clean looking fish. This kind of stuff right here, this stuff right here is deceptively slippery. So if you guys go to parks or fish low bank canals and see this mushy stuff, be very, very careful especially if it has a little bit of like green moss on top of it, that's even extra slippier. So just a mental note, but be careful with this kind of stuff. Usually where there's one, there might be another one. It might be in a little school. So I'm gonna fish the area some more and see if I can convince another one to bite. There he, oh, I just missed him. Right along the bank line. That's a good sign. In our urban lakes, our lakes are crystal clear. As you guys can see here, it's like a swimming pool and visibility is 10 to 12 feet until it disappears into the depths. So as you guys can see here, you gotta change your approach a little differently when you fish in these types of situations. So I don't fish sections long. If you guys have noticed the way I cast is I'll start like a clock. So I'll start over here. I'll work this area, I didn't get anything. I go over here, I didn't get anything. I go over here, I didn't get anything. And over here. So what I do is I just fan across. I vary my speeds, I vary my depths, I vary my cadence. And if I don't get bit, I am walking. I'm fishing with a very small, very small swim bait. This is about three inches. This is the uh, Gambler TZ on a goat jig head. It's an eighth of an ounce on a two odd hook. Um, as you guys can see, this is a very, very small bait. And the way I have this tied today is I have it on a loop knot. And the reason why I have it on a loop knot is because I want to impart a little bit more action. Uh, not only does it swim in line, but it does this little wobble um, from side to side. And by having this type of loop knot, it allows the bait or this lure to move freely on the line versus a straight tie. So I'm not getting a lot of hits with this color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a color change. Same size, but I'm just gonna do a color change and see how it goes. So this is the goat swim bait jig head that I was telling you guys about. This is, this is it naked. And as you guys can see, it has that unique spring, like a spring lock built into the jig head. And I love it because it holds on to the jig, uh, to the swim bait nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this new color on and I'm gonna show you guys how I do it. But like I told you, this is a two odd. So it matches the bait nicely. It doesn't overpower this little swim bait. So I go down to right where I want to take, have the hook point come out of, right in the crease of the middle of the swim bait. And then once it starts approaching the spring, I start, I start rotating it, in this case clockwise. And then I have to help it by turning the tail on the bottom end to help it continue moving up the shaft of the hook. And then once I reach the hook head, I just go ahead and adjust it accordingly and make sure it's just nice and neat. There you go. Like so. Time out, time out, time out. Do you guys enjoy the content you're watching right now? Please subscribe, you won't be sorry. So the outfit that I'm using for this outing, and for those of you who've been following me for a little while, this is a custom rod. Um, this is a custom uh, BFS rod, meaning it's a bait finesse system so this is like a medium light if you guys could read here it's a it's like a medium light rod 
and I have a Cast King Zephyr, which is a has a very shallow spool, which allows me to be able to cast these little baits a considerable distance. As you guys can see here, this this braid is awesome. This is this is a nine strand, twenty pound, and then moving up the line, what I'm using is I'm throwing this on a 15 pound monofilament leader tied with an FG knot. If you guys saw that video, it was pretty cool. I think it'll help a lot of you. Uh, these are the situations, however, where I would second guess and I should have gone maybe with a fluorocarbon leader. I'm gonna continue fishing, but maybe the fluorocarbon leader would have made a difference and probably around anywhere between the 10 to 12 pound class instead of being so heavy. So we'll see. All right, so I've given this area a considerable amount of time. I have covered, I've covered a couple of hundred yards and I only got that one bite. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I suspect that this bright sun may be affecting the bite. There's not many clouds. So I'm gonna go into some cover at a different part of this park and then maybe, maybe the bite will improve. So stick around for a second. Another spot, this is the last one. I gotta get going soon. But as I'm walking, I could talk why, I suspect why the bite is slow today. And the reason for it is because my opinion, of course, I think it's atmospherics. I think there's something going on with the barometric pressure. It's very, 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 very sunny. Not that many clouds. And I think it has them uh, hunker down a little bit. But you never know, let's see what happens. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep, uh, Keep casting, keep winding, keep looking, and then see what happens. There he is. That was a, oh man. Uh, just came out of that dried up mat of whatever that is. Shot out of there. I say this often in my videos and I'm so guilty of it. And that's because I haven't, I haven't caught enough fish today, but I'm very, with a trigger finger or a trigger set, so every time I feel a bite, I'm like automatically setting. And I tell you guys to allow the fish to take, to, you know, feel the weight to set the hook. So I'm guilty of it as well. I don't know if you guys can see that in the shot over here. See that white spot? I love fishing color changes because the surrounding area is like gra dead grass and muck. So they could just be sitting in there. And then as soon as you come across that white spot, they'll just dart in from the dark and get, and get that lure. I'll give it a couple of shots. I'll go right through the middle of it. I'll go right outside the edge of the color change. I'll hit it. I'll, I'll, I'll attack it in different, in different, uh, different points. I'm gonna try that out, outside edge and let's see if there's one sitting out there. No. Again, just because of my lure, my bait choice, I can't allow it to touch the bottom or anything for that matter because all this cheesy, nasty stuff just will get hooked easy. All right, now, now it becomes a game. I got 45 minutes left. Now it becomes a game to see if I could catch something. So when it's slow like this, I just like to create games for myself and challenges just to keep it interesting. So let's see, 45 minutes, let's see if I could get one more bass. This kind of cover complements my setup a little better that the, the black braid hides better in this grass. But regardless, I'm just not getting the, the bites, but another red ant, another fire ant. Guys, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Pick up after yourselves. I mean, this will affect the wildlife. This affects all, look at this. Look at this. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Look how much, look how much this line is. Guys, just pick it up. Look, look, look how easy it is, guys. You pick it up and you just put it in your pocket until, look, look, look how easy it is. Look, 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 look. You put it in your pocket. You see that? You put it in your pocket. And then when you see the nearest trash can, you throw it away. So like I mentioned, we have a lot of parks here in Miami. Miami, Broward, uh, down south. We have a lot of parks. We're fortunate enough to have that in big parks and some of them have lakes. So if you're ever visiting down here, you live down here, 
don't discount the fishing. Put a rod in your car and bring some, uh, some, some lures and some baits, and you're gonna be strangely surprised how successful you can be. Now, I'm not having the success today, but uh, I can tell you that um, I've had uh, some very good days in a small park like this. There he is. Did you guys see that? That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one, guys. Holy smokes. He smoked it. What is that? Oh my God, it's a huge peacock. It's a big peacock. I haven't caught a peacock in here in years. Look at the size of this peacock. Guys, listen to me very carefully. I have not caught a peacock in this lake in over 20 plus years. And look what I've caught right here. Smoked that swim bait. Smoked it. Going for the release. There he goes. There he goes. Look at that tank. All right, guys, since I caught that nice peacock, here is an important, important tip. And I'm guilty of this as well. Here's the important tip. Check that line. Right here, frayed. Oh, by the way, this, this peacock shre shredded my hand. Look how he shredded my thumb. Anyways, this line right here is completely, completely frayed. So I'm gonna cut and retie, and that's why I use very long leaders. It's frayed right here. Look at, that. Look at the size of the snails we have here. I think those are these African snails. It's a big shell. It's empty, but look at the size of this shell. You wanna, you wanna have some fun with some kids at a park, do a scavenger hunt and tell them to look for these snail shells. That nice peacock goes to show you that you think that you gotta go fish the depths because it's an urban park and everybody fishes it and you have to cast way out there. And don't get me wrong, very far deep cast will help you, but do not discount the bank line. That's why you, that's why I always, you guys are always gonna hear me talk about casting ahead before you walk to a, to a part of the bank because you never know what could be holding right along the bank. I've mentioned this on my videos in the past and I'm reiterating it now. Always cast ahead or behind the bank line because you never know what big fish is coming up shallow to feed. Thank you so much for coming along this trip with me. I hope you guys learned a few things. I had a great time regardless that I only caught two fish but I had a great time walking and talking with you guys and, and, and sharing with you the, uh, the stuff that I've learned over the years bank fishing here in South Florida. Stick around, watch this video right here. It's an old one, but I cover a lot of the lures and baits that I bring with me and the equipment that I bring with me when I bank fish, and I, and I think it may help some of you as well. Again, I appreciate you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys again soon.